So uh, today is day one of one actually, a wound clinic and I, funny story, which is really not that funny, but whatever. Um, I thought it was gonna be in the family medicine center and so I rushed there thinking that I'm running late and get there a few minutes early and then turns out it's actually not there at all. It's in a completely different part of town. Call my program director and he's like, yep, you're in the wrong spot. <laughs> yeah, I rushed here and finally made it to the right spot, but it actually worked out because he um, had a meeting. So it turns out that I'm actually 45 minutes early. I guess it all works out. I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to vlog today. I'm gonna try my best, but it's my first time here. I don't really know what to expect. So if anything, I might just like check in a little bit later. Yeah, I'll try my best. Right now I'm just sitting in the parking lot waiting. <laughs> What are we looking at, Dr. Riffitt? Uh, we are in the hyperbaric room here at the Wound Healing Center and Hyperbaric Clinic in Greenville, North Carolina. We have three hyperbaric chambers here where we do hyperbaric uh, therapy, also known as HBO therapy, for uh, patients for a number of different indications. Um, we've actually finished for the morning session, so we don't have patients here now. The chamber that we last used is being sanitized and uh, we're getting ready for our afternoon session, which will start in about 45 minutes. Cool. What are all of these things? All right, so these are acrylic tubes, meaning that we can see through the tubes. Obviously, there's a pressure chamber door here that's latched, so we would unlatch it, open the door. We have the patient on the bed, which you see in there. We would roll it out on this stretcher, have the patient get on the bed. We would push the bed into the chamber. We would lock this pressurized door behind them. Um, these doors do have ports on them, so if you have patients that are on IV medications, you can actually run those IV lines through the door and keep those IV medications going. Once they're inside the chamber, there's a very thick acrylic wall. They can see, but they can't hear. There are some speakers behind them in the door, so if we need to communicate with them, we just pick up the phone and we can talk to them and hear them, uh, what's going on with them in the chamber in real time. Uh, as far as your settings here, you have timers over here because different uh, different therapies for different indications would require different amounts of time in the chamber. Uh, we refer to these treatments every time they go is referred to as a dive. Uh, sometimes they'll do 10, 20, 30, even 60 dives for uh, an indicated um, modality. Um, these are our pressure gauges. So this tells you uh, where you're gonna set your pressure. Currently you're at, at um, ambient pressure. And then uh, if we wanted to set the pressure up to like two atmospheres, we would, and it would show that. And then this is showing you real time where the pressure is in the chamber. Um, so again, that would go up as we slowly brought that patient up to two atmospheres of pressure. Uh, we have an emergency shutdown event. In case of emergency, really the only time you would hit that switch is if, um, because these are pure oxygen environments, if there was ever like a spark or a flame that caused a fire in the chamber, you would emergency vent the patient. Obviously you don't want to emergency vent a patient that's at two atmospheres of pressure because you run the risk of causing things like um, caissons disease, also known as the bends. Mm -hmm. uh, you can basically get air emboli um, and we don't want to do that to patients. So nope. short of a fire in the chamber, we're not going to do an emergency vent. We'll slowly bring them down to pressure. If you think of other emergencies like strokes, heart attacks, things of that nature, uh, this is actually the most ideal environment for those patients to be in other than like a cat lab because they're being super saturated with oxygen at higher than normal atmospheric pressure. So you're actually saving tissue when they're in this chamber. So you can yeah. afford to bring them down to normal pressure at a normal speed. Um, this is just our vent settings. Uh, again, our emergency vent button, uh, button. We have master valves, our rate sets and our pressure sets that allow us to bring them to certain pressures. And that's pretty much it. Thank you, Dr. Whitman. That was really interesting. 
Hey guys, okay, so it's about um, noon right now and just finished at Wound Clinic. I'm gonna head over to the hospital so I can just go to the PM um, part of the ERT module. So it was really interesting, I learned a lot today. Uh, basically what our role is as physicians is pretty much see the patient and evaluate their wound to see how it's healing, to see if there's a necessity for any sort of debridement. And what that means is pretty much we have this like small, I guess, razor blade that's like curved and you to like gently uh, get rid of like the biofilm. So it helps prevent infection, also optimizes wound healing. And I got to see the hyperbaric oxygen chambers and it was pretty cool. It was really interesting to learn about all that stuff. So yeah, I got to do a lot. It was great to see wounds at different stages of healing just so I would have a better idea of like how to manage those different stages and what the best thing to do for each patient would be. So yep, yeah, I'm heading over to the hospital now and I hope this was interesting for you guys. Catch you in the next one.